Tonight, it's no secret how Kaho'olawe got its unfortunate nickname, the Target Island. The military dropped some 30,000 bombs over nearly half a century. But that was an uninhabited island, barren and unused. Tonight, we go in-depth as h and investigates an effort to remove dangerous old munitions from several thriving West Hawaii communities where close to 20,000 people live, work and play. For years now, many residents of Waikoloa have wanted to expand their growing town, but they're surrounded by hidden hazards, some people unaware of what could be buried beneath them. Tonight, investigative reporter Allison Blair reveals the military's dangerous legacy and what's being done to make the land safe. Oh, it's so popular, my goodness. Ask almost anyone. Good ones here. If you crave entertainment in this rural West Hawaii community. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. Just going around. The Waikoloa Bookmobile is the local's hotspot. You get dozens a day that come through. It's a great community asset. I wish it were able to be expanded. Though residents enjoy the Bookmobile, generations have been dreaming of a brick and mortar library for two decades. Right now, the closest one is nearly 30 miles away, but finding a spot to break ground on the project is tricky. The place to build the library has always been the challenge. To understand why, we've got to go back 80 years. Came here in December 1943, and at one point in time, there were 50,000 Marines here. None of the housing or anything you see was here. During the height of World War II, the United States military converted 200,000 acres of ranch land into a training camp known as the Waikoloa Maneuver Area. For close to two years, the land was battered with explosives, grenades, mortars, projectiles, and bombs. It's estimated as many as 20% malfunctioned and for some reason didn't detonate. Decades later, they're still energized and have the potential to explode. Those are classified as unexploded ordinances or UXO for short. These proceedings are closed. When the war ended, the camp closed. Left behind were an untold number of hazards hidden above and beneath the ground. Despite two separate cleanups in the years after the war, officials say lost munitions have killed four people. Others were hurt. The danger prompted the federal government to fund a third cleanup currently being conducted by three private companies that are overseen by the Army Corps of Engineers. That started in 2002 and continues today. Over the past two decades, contractors have found more than 2,700 unexploded ordinances in the Waikoloa Maneuver Area. As for how many are left, no one really knows. Finding them is tedious work that's done one step at a time. Would do it as if you would plowing a field. This is called an apex. Think of it like a high-tech metal detector. That helps locate, digitally map, and in some cases, identify metallic objects in the ground. It's the most advanced of several technologies contractors are currently using to sweep the Waikoloa Maneuver Area's 22 munition response sites, totaling about 100,000 acres. Each dot pinpoints locations explosives have been found. Experts say the old munitions can be anywhere. Larger ones are typically found buried deep in the dirt, while some are still sitting on the surface, camouflaged by vegetation. Often, they appear to be something they're not. This one, resembling a sprinkler head, turned out to be a mortar. Officials say areas are prioritized based on risk, but add community input does play a role. Even after a site is swept, it doesn't mean all the hazards are gone. Instruments can't detect a bomb if it's buried too deep. Uneven terrain and high concentrations of iron in the soil also make it difficult to know what's really there. Every device has its limitations. It's the second time crews have searched this munitions response site in Waimea that spans several thousand acres not far from Mamalahoa Highway. We've done an initial work earlier on in our process uh, in the early 2000s with a removal action, which was to address an immediate threat. The first of several. In addition to pasture land, the site also includes Waimea Middle School. 
In 2002, a student discovered a hand grenade in the garden, the first of three found on campus alone. Site-wide, crews found a total of 27 unexploded ordinances. Work is now underway to retrace the steps technicians took two decades ago, and they're still finding explosives. We found four additional hand grenades and three practice landmines. Dangerous stuff. Yes. The Army Corps of Engineers says it could take up to 10 years before this particular site is classified at response complete. <laughs> Overall, residents say progress at the Waikoloa Maneuver Area has been painfully slow. Two decades into the latest cleanup, the vast majority of sites are nowhere close to being cleared. How many are finished of the 22? Well, there's two. One's along Saddle Road, the old Saddle Road, and then there's another one that was a hand grenade court. Uh, closer down by uh, Kauai High Harbor. This Army Corps of Engineers map makes it glaringly obvious just how much work is left. Of the 100,000 acre site, less than 1% of it has been classified at response complete. It includes this 535 acre strip of land highlighted in yellow along Old Saddle Road and this 3.7 acre parcel highlighted in teal just north of Kauai High Road. What has been the biggest obstacle? in all of this and why it's taking so long. It's the process that we follow. He says that process starts with a remedial investigation to determine what hazards might be there, followed by a feasibility study. Then they have to plan the cleanup. That's documented in what's called a record of decision, which okays that cleanup. Only then can work to remove and safely detonate those munitions begin. Officials say it took between six and seven years to finish work on the two parcels, now classified at response complete. Then we follow on if needed with long-term management. A big part of that is educating the public, explaining even after contractors examine the land, there's still a possibility explosives could have been missed. Are they more volatile the older they get? Or are they less volatile? Is there What happens to them over time? They still maintain that ability to, uh, to be destructive. When you're doing digging in the ground is, is a big cause for concern for us. Department of Health yeah, Environmental see, Specialist Sven Lindstrom. The 2,700 that they found so far have been across about 30% of the area that was used for munitions training activities. So you have to assume at least that many more are still out there, you know, probably even more than that. The Waikovilo village was in the center of the impact area. So now today, fast forward, we have a community that has a middle school, it has an elementary school. But the area still lacks many of the basics. No police station, no evacuation shelter, and no public library. I think the UXO and the clearance is definitely slowed things down and will continue to slow things down if they don't listen to the community, really listen to the needs of the community and respond to that. We try and work with the community interests. When asked if more money would help, the Army Corps of Engineers said not necessarily. Do you think the process could be shortened in any manner? We want to look at other alternatives, but right now we're authorized to follow a process and that's kind of what we do. When will the cleanup of the Waikoloa Maneuver mm. Area be complete? Our life cycle plan projects out 30 years right now. Around 2053, a lingering timeline that health officials say still might not be long enough. If the situation is going to be what it is now, which is even after they complete a site that there's still a long-term management that's required, then the fact of the matter is that they're never going to be finished here. I think the community has to be much stronger in setting the priority for them. It's been 20 years, and the vision to expand this bookmobile is just starting to take shape. The councilwoman says land for a permanent library has been secured. A two and a half acre parcel that belongs to the county recently became available. Now the focus has shifted towards funding the multi-million dollar project. It's important to understand this is just one small example of the many challenges currently being faced. Without changes, there are challenges the community will continue to face for years to come. I think that the community has to find those moments to influence the people that make the decision on not only what the priorities are, but how the money is spent. These are community services and they deserve it. 
to provide input on which sites should be prioritized, contact the Department of Health's Hazard Evaluation and Emergency Response Office. There were also meetings held twice a year where the community is updated on the cleanup. The next one is scheduled for Tuesday, May 23rd. A location for that meeting still hasn't been nailed down, but we'll post it on hawaiinewsnow.com once it's all set. Allison Blair, Hawaii News Now. Thank you, Allison. And engaging with community members and educating them on what to do if they come across an unexploded ordinance is a big part of the Army Corps of Engineers mission. They teach the three R's, recognize that what's found is a potential hazard. Don't pick it up, retreat away, then report it immediately by calling 911.